Ron Schwartz here. In this video, I want to go over how important articulation is and how big a factor it is in our overall sound. Um, I've taught a lot of beginner musicians on all instruments uh, for many, many years in New York and now here in Los Angeles, California. And what I've noticed, especially with beginners, there's some kind of resistance or hesitancy to articulate. And uh, right now when I'm teaching beginning flutes, I'm noticing that they're what I call huffing and puffing <laughs> to get a sound when it's so much simpler to just use your tongue and articulate. Um, so I just want to go through like a quick exercise on like three instruments just to show you how simple it is and to also show you where you should be thinking about uh, where your tongue aims. I'm going to make it really simple for you. In fact, there's only two syllables you need to know. To and do. That's it. And we don't emphasize the, the consonant, the t or the d. We emphasize the oo, the vowel. Okay, so two we use for separated style. So we're thinking two, 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 two. All right, that's what we'd be thinking. Say that syllable, repeat that, uh, repeat that little phrase after me. And when you're saying it, notice where your tongue hits in your mouth. Two, 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 two. Now, everybody's different. Some people the, use the tip of their tongue and it goes behind their top teeth. Some people use the tip of their tongue and it goes to the edge of their front teeth, behind. Some people use the tip of their tongue and it goes to the edge of their bottom teeth. Okay. Whatever, wherever you say that syllable, that's where you tongue. Okay, There's, there was a lot of... Uh, controversy. I remember when I was growing up, you have to tongue behind your top teeth. That's not necessarily true. You know, we're all made differently. We all have different teeth, different, um, different sizes of our tongue, different, uh, shapes of our jaw, uh, not shapes of our jaw, sizes of our jaw, you know, all those types of things. Some of us have, uh, suffer through TMJ. Some of us, um, have very like narrow oral cavities, all that kind of thing. So we have to go with what's natural for us. So why not do that? So the way you say two, 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 two is going to be the way that you're going to tongue that in, the, in an instrument, articulate. So now the next step is to use air sounds. So I'm going to say two, but without the vocal cords. So repeat after me. Now I remember what I just did, and I just put it on an instrument. The flute's the, the, the most natural one of all. You don't have something sticking inside your mouth. You know, you don't have to buzz your lips. If you're able to go, you can do it on the instrument. Um, and you notice that you don't need as much air. You're not expending as much energy. All right, so that's really, really crucial. So for something like a flute, it's as natural as if you're saying, Right? Uh, let's say I do this in threes. Same thing. Same thing. Okay? Now that's the separated style. Let's take another instrument like, uh, let me take my tenor sax. And let's use the do syllable. That's a syllable for connected style. So I'm thinking, do, 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 do. Say that back. Notice where your tongue's hitting. Notice, do, 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 do. Notice how it feels when it's hitting. It's a little different, right? Okay. Now, here's the kicker. When you've got a woodwind instrument, you know, that's like a saxophone, clarinet, oboe, bassoon, you've got something in your mouth. So you're not going to be hitting behind your top teeth or bottom teeth or whatever. Instead, you do need to aim for the tip of the reed, not the underside. You aim for this, um, you're going to really affect your sound. You're going to squeak, squawk, but more importantly, when you start to get into the upper register, you're going to notice that those notes aren't going to come out because you're stifling the reed. Think about it. You're stopping the airflow. Okay, so you want to aim for the tip of the reed very lightly with your tongue. Okay, very lightly. Now, you've got a little bit of an advantage because you could use your 
tip or the front, not the middle. I think that that's a little bit too clunky, okay? But you can use the front of your tongue to touch the tip of the reed. So for, for woodwind players, you could practice by going or and use the front of your tongue. Um, you know, it's probably gonna wind up behind your top teeth, but that'll give you a little practice. But here's another way you could practice too. Again, I call this air sounds. So let's say I use the do syllable, right? Do, 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 do. I'm gonna do air sounds. I'm gonna use the front of my tongue and aim it for the tip of the reed. That's training my tongue. It's like muscle memory, right? I'm training my tongue to aim for the right spot. And I'm also training it. This is crucial for us reed players. You gotta get it out of the way. You can't let it sit there because it's gonna affect the sound. It's gonna affect, uh, it's gonna get in the way of the air reaching the reed to help the reed vibrate, okay? So again, I'll do. So that's like a connected style. separated. I'm just going. And I'm not having to breathe after every note. In fact, here's a little test you can do whether you're a teacher or a player. Do you breathe after every syllable? <laughs> I hope not. You'll be like dizzy, lightheaded, and uh, just crazy, right? And yet you see this with a lot of beginning flute players. They have this just, I don't know what it is, but they just want to just huff and puff. That's what I call it huffing, huffing and puffing. It wastes energy. It's not efficient. And you can't play things fast. And, and you also, it affects the sound because you get this like, what? You know, you get this like um, uh, split tone. You can't control it. Okay, you can't control your tone. So, for woodwind players, we have to deal with, with that kind of situation. So, it's really just a question of naturally saying to or do, but on the tip of the reed. And just using air sounds to reinforce that. Okay, so now, ne the next thing is a brass instrument. Now, we have it similar to flutes in the sense we don't have something inside our mouth. However, we have to close our lips or keep our lips in like an M position or that kind of thing. So we have to think about where we naturally say to or do. To, 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 to. For me, it's behind my top teeth, all the way uh, where the teeth meet the, the, uh, the roof of the mouth. Um, again, the other choices are at the edge of the top teeth. You gotta be careful though, you don't wanna, you don't wanna do this. I started off doing that when I played trumpet and that was a really hard habit to break. Why don't you want to do that? It's the same reason for not tonguing on the bottom part of the reed. You tongue on the bottom part of the reed, you stop the sound. So when you do this, you stop your, your reed, your lips from vibrating, okay? Um, so keep it behind the teeth. Some people tongue behind the bottom teeth, on the, uh, the top edge of the bottom teeth. Whatever works for you, doesn't matter. In fact, they found a lot of the great high note players tend to, to articulate there. It's all good, right? So I'm gonna now use air sounds to reinforce as well. Let me use a, uh, let's use connected style. So I'm gonna think the syllable do. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna separate my lips. I'm aiming my tongue exactly where I said it before I, you know, did the air sound. Now I'll play it. Okay, as easy as I can say, do, 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 that's, that's what I do. Um, separated style, two, 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 two. One more point, and this is crucial for all instruments. Watch my chin. 
Yes, I got a little bit of a double chin. I get it. Forget that. Watch my chin. Watch my chin for movement. Is it moving? No. Here's one way to tell for yourself. Just put your hand underneath. When you're double tonguing, you'll feel a little, little bit of movement. But what you don't want, and I don't know if I can do this, but you don't want this chewing motion. I can't even do it. It hurts. <laughs> um, when you do that, again, the same concept like I said before. You don't want to stop the reed. You don't want to tongue on the bottom part of the reed because it stops the sound. You don't want to tongue through your lips because it stops the vibration. You don't want to separate your lips by chewing. Two, 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 two. Stops the sound. It's the same thing on a woodwind instrument. If you're, if you're playing and you're chewing... That sounds terrible. Um, you lose you losing contact with the reed. Okay, so a couple of important concepts here. Actually, really three. Imitate nature. Imitate how you say the syllables to and do. Okay, um, for flute and brass players, it's as natural as the way you say it. For woodwind players, we have to aim at the tip of the reed, but you have a choice of tip or front of your tongue touching that. So that's a little bit of an advantage. Um, for everybody, we should not be chewing. You know, it's going to affect your sound totally. And for brass players, especially, and flute players, we don't want to necessarily tongue between our lips. Okay. So I hope this video lesson helped you um, think about your articulation, think about what you're doing. And use air sound type of exercises on all the instruments. Flute's a little bit difficult. Uh, you can't use air sounds, you know, on the flute. So you're just going to go in the air. You can do this. There you go. Uh, but use the air sound exercises to uh, build muscle memory for where your tongue needs to be, whether it's, you know, on a saxophone or a woodwind mouthpiece, trumpet, or on a flute. Okay, thanks for joining me today. Take care. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.